G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're gonna to be having a look at a fairly strange plane, and this particular plane, I have to admit, I don't really enjoy playing. This is the Saab 105, that is the premium variant. Uh, it is the UE, I believe. If you wanna correct me in the comment section below, feel free. Uh, but as I understand it, this is basically a Saab 105G that has been re-engined with supposedly more powerful engines, and uh, been prepared for export. It's about a step up from the SK-60 Saab 105 and then sort of a, a logical other step up. But to be honest, whilst I enjoyed the SK-60B, I can't bring myself to enjoy this plane. However, it doesn't really stop this match from being anything but extraordinary. This is probably one of the single craziest matches that I've had, just simply because of the way things panned out and uh, the Saab 105 just happened to be along for the ride. Now, this plane is a, I believe, a rank five premium. You get AIM-9Bs, you get gun pods, uh, and it is supposedly a light attack and re not maybe reconnaissance, maybe it's a, a sort of light fighter bomber or light strike fighter. Either way, in War Thunder, it sits at a battle rating of 8.3, and at 8.3, you're pretty damn close to the MiG-15 BIS, and I believe you're actually the same battle rating as the non BIS. Now, the BIS and the non-BIS can pretty much do everything better except in the Department of Missiles because, well, the MiG-15s don't have missiles, but you don't really need missiles when you have guns, and this plane, my god, has guns, guns, guns. Two pods of what are basically DIFA cannons, these things can be your best friend or your worst enemy. They have a fairly wide berth, uh, they sort of sit quite far away from the wings, so you are going to be the victim of convergence. Your guns might converge at a funny spot, and you also have to get used to that. Not only that, consider how big the guns are relative to the size of the plane, so that's kind of the amount of weight that you're adding to this plane. Consider that the pilot and co-pilot sort of sit nice and close, stacked together, and uh, you're just slapping massive gun pods on that are about half the length of the plane. So we're looking at a fairly small boy here, but I believe it's fairly weighed down. That being said, the engines that are put on this plane, I believe to be a similar variant to that of the G91YS, albeit not after burning. So it does have a fair amount of thrust, and I'm kind of using that thrust to pick as much altitude as possible. Now I have turned around for this GAC-38, and just as I turn around, it's on the radar there, yep a MiG-17. Now I completely hate when this happens, it'll always happen to me, but I'll turn around and someone will sort of pop up behind me. Now this MiG-17 is not paying attention uh, and at the last minute decides to turn away, which is a fairly smart move considering that you don't want to be on the end of those cannons. So what I'm going to do is roll back around, a MiG-15 underneath is spotted, a MiG-17 off the side, and just as I turn around, two G-91s with missiles. Oh my lord, the spotting system has not been kind to me today. So, I'm having pretty much no choice but to roll around, and you can see how slow it rolls around. Going for this particular G91 first, going for a quick burst, pulling off very, very late, but still having plenty of time to move away from the shots. And another fairly late head-on there, but providing me with kill number two. Fully committing head-ons from premium G91s is kind of something that uh, I should expect, but... At the same time, you don't want to take the risks just like I did. That being said, it has paid off quite nicely. Now, as I've looked around, I haven't spotted any planes, and I'm going to head back, but just as I do that, out appears out of nowhere another G91. I cannot get into a fight with these G91s because I know I'm not going to survive, so I need to get the drop on them. I need to make sure that I I'm in a situation where I'm always an advantage against these planes, and it looks like this G91R4 is not paying attention at all, so I'm going to send a 9B on his way, and just as it finishes burning, it hits beautifully. A beautiful strike home there for kill number three on uh, three oblivious planes. So, my luck is looking up here in the uh, Saab 105, and uh, it's just going to get better and better. You see, most of the enemy planes are now down at the deck, and being a plane that doesn't like being in a 1 versus 1, I've now, yeah, gotten myself into a 1 versus 1. So, I'm just going to cut the throttle, I'm going to try and make this MiG-15 overshoot, and you can see, even though the MiG-15 has picked up so much speed in a dive, he is just about able to turn with me. So, if the MiG-15 was smart, 
he could basically just sit behind me all day long and uh, pretty much not worry about it. But he's overcooked his approach, and now this has left me with the opportunity to pick up a stalling MiG-15. And I'm going to quick burst here, and another quick burst finishes that one off pretty quickly. So I can turn my attention to the other MiG-15. Wow, my luck has just gotten even better. And I think that's the only thing that I can do in this plane, is just hope for better luck. This MiG-15 decides he wants to turn fight slowly in front of me, which is a great idea considering that I have an AIM-9B prepped. But that gentle turning is going to stop me from uh, getting the kill until he rolls over, because I know the MiG-15 has a really poor roll rate. That AIM-9B was going to make short work of them no matter what. Wow. What the hell is going on here? I told you this match would be nothing short of extraordinary. Now, we're going in a little bit further to help a friend out here. This F9F Panther is looking pretty sad, and that is a MiG-17 AS and a Jutor. Now, the Jutor does have potential to be fairly deadly, and the MiG-17 here is clearly the bigger threat, but greedy old Spitfire here is going for the Jutor because it is simply so much slower. Now, in most situations, the MiG-17 would be the prime target, but in this case, the Jutor is actually at the back of the pack, and therefore is the smartest decision. Now I almost pancake myself getting greedy here and I don't land my shots. So I'm going to look around for that MiG-17. I can't seem to see him. And I'm going to nose over, go for the Jew Tour and hope that uh, the MiG-17 ignores me. And lo and behold he does. And the Jew Tour has also pitched up for me. And look at this perfect shot that I can just get on the Jew Tour. Beautiful, beautiful kill. Kill number, I believe, five or six. Kind of crazy, hey? It's just going to get better. The MiG-17 here is now engaged by the F-86A, and whilst the F-86A is a fairly competent plane in a flat turn, the MiG-17 is taking it into the vertical and so is absolutely dominating the F-86, but that doesn't stop the F-86F from joining in the spray fest, and the MiG-17 looks like he is starting to panic, maybe he's getting into a bit of trouble, maybe he's even critically damaged, so I thought, you know what, screw it, I am going to, I'm going to put my two cents in. Gonna put my two gun pods and uh, give it a go, shall we? The F-86A is now on the back foot, and so I can help a brother out be, because, you know, I do love me a free kill. Have a look how slow this MiG-17 is. I'm gonna go for a quick little burst arena here, and I critically hit him with 10 rounds. That, that was a pretty impressive shot, I do have to say so myself. And uh, the MiG-17 is starting to look like he is hurting. He's trailing a bit of smoke, uh, maybe he's trailing a bit of oil. I fire a couple more shots, and it looks like he's going to go into the dirt. Maybe, maybe he's going to go into the dirt, so I'm going to roll over and try and finish the job. This MiG-17 is the second last enemy on the team, and if I can finish him off, I will have myself a really, really nice game here. And a uh, pretty bonkers match, to say the least. The Sub-105 is not exactly the jet that is uh, going to get you the most kills, and honestly, I recommend that you don't buy it, to be honest. That being said, it doesn't stop you from having crazy ass games like this. Seven kills in the Saab 105. I, I just can't believe my luck. And to be honest, that's the way it goes. I got really lucky in this match. And I want to show you this match particularly because it's bonkers and because it's funny. And I think you guys will enjoy it. But uh, it's not done by a well-renowned well plane. This plane, honestly, I would, I would recommend you stay away from it. It's just very heavy, it's quite limiting. If you're gonna do some ground attack, then absolutely. And by ground attack, I specifically mean uh, close air support in ground battles. Uh, it is one of the planes that I do recommend for ground battles because it carries the uh, all-purpose RB5As. They're pretty good, but if you're gonna use it for air RB, I just can't bring myself to recommend it. It's just one of those planes that limits you in a lot of the things that you can do simply because of its performance. The guns are, you know, you can deal with them. You can get used to them. It has two AIM-9Bs. That's a fairly good run. But if you can't keep up with the fastest enemies and you can't turn with the fa the slowest or, hell, even the average ones, then you're going to end up having a bad time. And this plane doesn't really have anything special. It is just a ground attacker. And unfortunately, this plane is just both too expensive and too difficult to fly to recommend for Air RB. 8,000 Golden Eagles is a lot of money to be spending on a plane that is not user-friendly 
and a plane that you can't really get consistent results with. That being said, if you're up for a challenge, then this plane might actually be a decent pick, but I'll tell you what, I just can't believe my luck in this match, so I decided to put it up on the channel, and that's the only reason why this video is going up. I really struggled to get it footage when it first came out, and uh, I struggle to recommend it even though I managed to get a 7 kill game. So ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for today. I thank you very much for supporting the channel, honestly. It means the world to me. Thank you very much for watching to the end. And if you watch to the end, do let me know in the comment section below by commenting, uh, let's say, I made it to the end of the video, gang. Thanks for watching, ladies and gents. Thanks for putting up with the cringe. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.